Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a tandem wing configuration in 2D uh, using uh, NACA 0012 airfoil profiles. Um, so you can grab all the code from the GitHub repo, uh, the link to which is in the description. And inside the repo you have the case folder which contains all of the open foam configuration files. The clean script, which cleans up all generated uh, files such as this main.mesh, and the mesh folder containing the gmesh scripts uh, from which we generate uh, the mesh to be imported into OpenFoam, and the, run the run script, which is sort of the main script to run a simulation from scratch. So if we look at the run script, uh, you can see that we generate the mesh with, the, with gmesh here convert it, uh, map the uh, uh, physical boundary uh, boundary types to the names, uh, and finally run simple foam, which is a steady state uh, and compressible flow solver. Um, before we go into it, I'll show you the result. So here you could see the tandem airfoils, one in front of the other, free stream going from left to right horizontally and uh, I've also added some streamlines and you can see that the uh, airfoil here is totally in the wake of this airfoil and you might be able to tell that the pressure differences the colors are stronger in the front airfoil than in the back so you definitely see some uh, difference in uh, aerodynamic force due to being in the back um, I didn't uh, implement the functionality to separate the two forces from each of the airfoils in this repo, but I do plan to do that in a future video. Um, so yeah, this is this is the velocity field. You can see the highest velocity. The the uh, airfoils are, are at an angle of attack of eight degrees, and. <clears throat> See the velocity is highest here at the leading edge, and we have uh, sort of a light uh, wake here beginning at the trailing edge. Um, and for the pressure field, we see that there's a higher pressure um, on the bottom. Uh, and of course, uh, with a max of about 50 pascals. Um, the free stream was set to 9 meters per second and the cords are normalized to 1 meter or they're 1 meter each um, so yeah I think that's it for the solution so let's get into the mesh so you can see our main mesh script which includes all the other files contained in this directory um, and oh, first we'll look at the parameters. So that's what drives everything else. We have these parameters common to all airfoils, and I made the number of airfoils you can specify dynamic. So here we have we're specifying two airfoils, um, and we each for each airfoil there's an angle of attack, and for each airfoil there's a leading edge x coordinate and a leading edge y coordinate. Uh, it's up to you to make sure these are not conflicting or else you'll get an error when you're trying to create the mesh and of course up here we have um, uh, the airfoil parameters so this is like a grid size parameter and this is the number of points that you use in the spline the B spline that's actually used to draw the line of the airfoil um, it's not you know accurate to machine precision the resulting B spline is not accurate to machine precision compared to the uh, points, the NACA airfoil points, but it's fairly close and you can always increase the point count if you need it even closer. Um, so yeah, the in case you didn't know, NACA airfoils are, can be drawn according to uh, a formula, and I've implemented that formula in NACA.geo, and I've made it simple to uh, get the points for a symmetric airfoil. So. This, of course, this number, of course, in the NACA 00XX represents the uh, cord normalized thickness, maximum thickness of the airfoil. So here it's uh, 0.12. <coughs> All 
all right uh, yeah and going through the main you can see that we create we call this symmetric airfoil routine to create uh, airfoil loops for each of our airfoils um, so one thing I don't like about Gmesh is that it's sort of uh, unsophisticated in terms of the functions so they're really just macros so you have to define the names here and when you call a macro it's just like as if you were manually pasting that code into the same location so we're not passing it these these values we're just assigning the names to these so that as if you copied the code from symmetric airfoil into this location you know it would recognize those names that you've defined up here um, so that could use improvement but um, nevertheless we are still able to do what we want uh, for this uh, case um, so yeah and then I simply sum up all the airfoil loops for each airfoil uh, create the wind tunnel boundary and use these airfoil loops in addition to the wind tunnel loop to create the final surface that contains our uh, unstructured mesh um, and then this is an optional thing you don't have to do this but recombine turns um, uh, triangular cells into quadrilaterals and of course extrusion and then picking out the boundaries to be recognized in open foam, naming the boundaries. So we have the outlet, we have walls, inlet, airfoil surfaces all together. If you wanted to get forces for each individual airfoil, you'll have to name uh, a surface for each airfoil. So airfoil 1 and airfoil 2, for example. And the front and back, which is simply empty in the 2D case, and, uh, and then our volume. Uh, which can be given an arbitrary name or integer ID, but it needs to be just uh, identified. So <clears throat> if we take a look at the mesh here, you see that it's recombined. Uh, our cells are quadrilateral. This is the inlet. This is the top wall, the bottom wall, and the outlet. Um, here you can see the mesh gets finer as we get close to the airfoils. Um, this mesh, of course, is not great for an accurate simulation. Uh, but just for simplicity, I've used fully unstructured everywhere. Um, so you can see this uh, airfoil tilted at an angle of attack, rotated, and yeah, one behind the other uh, according to our parameters that we specified. The leading edge location, their angle of attack, rotated about the leading edge, and that's about it. Um, So let's go into the OpenFoam configuration files. Uh, you can see I've run a simulation here already. It converged in 532 iterations, uh, as you can tell by the latest integer here. And uh, if we take a look at the boundary conditions, uh, new, new T and new tilde are turbulence models, uh, variables. If you choose a different turbulence model, this is the uh, Spalar al Maris one equation turbulence model uh, but you can also use others such as the K Epsilon and Omega SST um, and you know of course for those you'll need the boundary conditions for each of the turbulence model variables but common to all would be the pressure folder here I simply use the free stream pressure boundary condition uh, initialized to the free stream value here um, for the inlet and outlet um, and of course zero gradient on walls, physical walls and front and back empty because this is a 2D simulation. <coughs> uh, similarly for the velocity, U, uh, 9 meters per second wind tunnel speed, no slip on the walls and airfoil, although I could probably use a slip on the walls, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, I think. Um, so those are the boundary conditions, uh, and then we can take a look at uh, transport properties, which is this is density and kinematic viscosity or dynamic viscosity. I'm not sure one of those, um, but this is a typical value for air at near close to uh, room temperature. Uh, and this is our where we define our turbulence model. You could see Spellar Almeris. 
I mentioned before. And take a look at the system. You can see in our change dictionary dict, so you can, this is used by the change dictionary command we saw in the run.sh script. Uh, inlets and outlets are simply patches because uh, you know they are. Uh, yeah, OpenFoam sort of organizes the physical patch type into patches, walls, wedge. You know, there's there's a particular organization uh, that you can find on the in the OpenFoam standard docu documentation. But for <coughs> inlets and outlets uh, uh, that use the free stream. Uh, Free stream boundary conditions, their patches, and these walls and airfoil surfaces have a physical type of wall, and of course the front and back empty in the 2D case. Um, take a quick look at the control dict. Uh, nothing much here. Um, I did it. This uh, this part does uh, configure the force. Uh, at a given number throughout uh, to be written at the get at, at throughout the simulation at a given number of time steps. Um, as you can see, I, I simply did all of the airfoils at once. Um, so, yeah, it's a simple setup. But here's a stub in case you want to modify it for your purposes. And yeah, so I think there's nothing too special about the schemes and solution config files. Uh, pretty standard. Um, and I think that concludes everything to go over here. Uh, just one last thing. You can modify the parameters to be a biplane configuration or triplane if you increase the airflow count. All you have to do is simply modify the leading edge X and Y accordingly uh, as well as the angle of attack. So you can make like crazy seven multi airfoils with uh, different angle of attacks and in, in an arbitrary arrangement. Um, it might be useful to add a chord so you can specify you know different size elements to get a true like multi element wing simulation. Uh, that would be a good idea to add, and I might add that if there's enough demand. Um, but that's all for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions uh, or requests, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.